Hey everyone, Austin here again with a quick play. It's been a little while, but uh, I've recently learned Jaws on the NES. Yes, the NES game based on the classic 70s movie of the same name. Loosely based on it, at least. But uh, this is actually a pretty cool little uh, like arcade-style game that you can beat in under 10 minutes if you know exactly what to do. So hopefully we're going to actually be able to do that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is play through the whole game, and I'm going to talk my way through it, as I always do, and I'll give you guys some tips and talk about my various strategies and stuff like that and how I complete the game. Uh, first off, huge shout-outs to Beesworth, who's been a long-time viewer, and he was watching me play this on Twitch. He actually recommended it. Uh, he was like, I really, really like this game. You should learn this game. And uh, he was kind of walking me through the process as I was playing it for kind of like the first time. And uh, yeah, it, it all made sense. And so thank you once again, Beesworth, for all the assistance. Uh, because of him, we've got a playthrough of Jaws and or a walkthrough or, or whatever you want to call it. So, but yeah, this is actually kind of like one of those games that people generally think is really bad. But when you actually learn the mechanics and stuff like that, it's actually pretty fun. Uh, there's lots of shooting going on, lots of button mashing and stuff like that, which is great for the NES controller. Um, but it's also not like a bad looking game for 87. And like it runs well, it plays well, it's responsive, the hitboxes are pretty good, all that stuff. It's like, uh, I, I think it's one of those games that's kind of like unfairly maligned. But uh, yeah, it's a short and sweet game. Definitely one of those like good, quick pick up and play kinds of games. Kind of like Trojan on NES, which isn't like a phenomenal game, but it's a nice game you can pick up and beat in like 10 or 15 minutes. And Jaws is uh, very similar to that uh, in terms of like game length. And that's kind of nice, honestly. So let's go ahead and hit that start button and jump right into it. So you start off on the map screen and the idea is to just kind of roam around and go to the other seaport. You have two seaports, the one that you start at, and then you have a second one on the other side of the map. And uh, when you uh, get into random encounters like this, uh, you basically just float around, you can shoot with the B button, and uh, enemies will occasionally drop shells. And the idea is to try to pick up those shells, uh, because the shells are currency in this game. So once you get to the other seaport, you'll be able to get uh, items or upgrades uh, based on how many shells you have. Now, uh, one of the tips that Beesworth gave me actually when uh, I was I was learning this is stay off the bottom of the screen, and it's a really good tip actually. I highly recommend just kind of like floating more towards like the upper half of the playfield, and the playfield sizes will change depending on the area of water you're at. There's like. Uh, you know, stuff close to the shore, for instance, you'll have much less moving room because, uh, you know, you're in uh, a different area of the sea. Uh, so we're kind of like in deep sea area right now, but uh, there's the stuff near the shore, which is, uh, again, will give you a whole lot less room to, to move around. So, but yeah, we're basically just trying to make our way to the, uh, the second seaport, and once we get that, we're going to get our transmitter. And so, as we're going through uh, the ocean here, or wherever we're at, um, Jaws will be tracking us down. Uh, the transmitter will actually give us an audio cue when Jaws is nearby. And uh, so that's always going to be your first upgrade. But after that, if you hit the opposite seaport, you trade in some shells, you'll get a power level up. So I'm at power level one right now, which is the weakest that you can be. And uh, not really recommended for taking on Jaws. Um, you know, you definitely want to be at least level three or four uh, before you start going after Jaws himself. The idea of the game is to basically just defeat Jaws. Uh, you drain all of his power, which is power meters at the bottom right hand portion of the screen. And when you see these little sharks here, usually they're the last enemy. So, and then we go to a bonus scene. Bonus scenes, uh, there's no risk on these. But you basically just drop bombs, you kill some of these enemies, you'll get shells uh, in return after the, uh, the whole bonus scene is over with. You can hold forward and uh, speed up. You can also hold back to slow down, which helps you aim your bombs a little bit. But your plane is always pushed forward, so... But we're gonna play a couple of these bonus levels over the course of the game. And again, like I said, the game can be like less than 10 minutes long if you really know what you're doing. So we're already making decent progress so far. We got some shells. We're gonna get our transmitter. Now, unfortunately, some game times, if you're like trying to speed run this game for some reason, uh, the game times can really be heavily dependent on the random encounter uh, count. 
It's kind of like a role-playing game, like a classic JRPG, where you're just roaming around a, uh, a field map, and you'll just randomly get into battles. And it's kind of the same way in Jaws. And, uh, there was a time I was playing where I swear I must have gotten into, like, 15 battles, uh, before I made it to the other seaport. I was like, this is so tedious, I keep getting into another, another battle. Uh, but there's another really good tip, actually, uh, that, uh, Beesworth had actually mentioned, and that is actually going for your submarine. So, I'm in scuba form right now, as the manual likes to call it, uh, but there is a submarine you can actually find. And what's really cool about the submarine is you get an extra attack, uh, you get this, uh, bomb attack with the second button, but also it moves a lot faster, and you can also absorb one hit with the submarine. You'll actually basically crash, and you'll go back in the scuba form. So, getting the, uh, the submarine, it's basically, it, it kind of, like, randomly generates around the map. So, like, one thing you could do is just try to, like, go all the way around to the outside here, and maybe it's here, maybe it's not, so far I don't see it. But where it appears seems to be somewhat random. And it's, it doesn't always appear in the same spot every time you play. It does move around. And so far, I don't see the submarine. It's okay, I've just hit something, which means uh, another random encounter. Now, you do get points in this game. Points don't really do much for you outside of just, like, bragging rights. Or if, uh, you know, you were one of those people back in the day that had a, uh, kind of like a manual leaderboard in your dorm room or something like that. I actually, uh, had a friend back in the day that would do that. I would go over to his dorm room and play Contra and <laughs> try to beat his high score. Um, but that's really all that score does for you. It doesn't really do anything else. You, you get these crabs, uh, you get these stars. They're all worth points. Some worth, uh, more than others. And the values of the stars in particular might actually increase over the course of a stage. Because I have seen the stars be worth, uh, you know, more points than, than, than at other times, so... So we're at power level 2 right now, so... And, oh, there's another battle. Let's just, uh, sit towards the top here. I don't, uh, I don't trust the, uh, the ground. Or the floor. Because as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of, like, uh, jellyfish that are popping up. And this is a, uh, one-hit kill kind of game. So as much as I want those shells, I also don't want to die. Uh, when you die in this game, you lose, uh, like, I don't remember if it's, like, all of your power or much of your power, but... I remember dying in this being very punishing, and so... The idea is kind of to not die. Now, the game can get, like, NES hard, quote-unquote, but it's kind of dependent on how long you've been playing. Like, the farther in you get, I found that the difficulty kind of ramps up, and so the idea is to also try to... try to beat the game as quickly as possible, because by doing so, you're not gonna have to deal with, like, as many enemies and, and, and stuff like that. So those, like, shallow water sections, like, that I was just in, they can be really, really tough later on in the game. Like, lots of enemies, but very little room to move. So, you want to try to get powered up, quickly, and then kill Jaws quickly. But yeah, once we actually, uh, you know, deplete Jaws' health bar, it goes into this, like, third-person, sort of, style, uh, section, and it's like the final battle. And you basically have to use what's called a strobe, and make Jaws appear out of the water. And then, uh, when he's close to your boat, you need to stab him with like, the front rod of your boat. It's kind of cool, actually. But there's Jaws. And again, I'm only at level 2 right now, I think. I don't really want to mess around with him. But now we're going to be at level 3. And I don't know if it's actually possible to deplete his entire health bar at level 3, like, on a fresh start, on a fresh battle. So, it'll probably, probably be best for me to just try to get up to level 4, at the very least. Oh no, 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 no. That's terrible. I was not expecting that. I wasn't even on the floor. Yeah, I'm down to power level two now. Ugh, oh, that's terrible. So we're gonna have to actually try to level up again. There's Jaws. Again, I wanna try to just avoid him. And it's gonna give me the transmitter again. Yep. Or the receiver. I think it's called the transmitter in the actual instruction manual. But here, uh, it's actually called the receiver, so... 
two different names for it. And unfortunately, I've got zero shells. So I'm gonna have to actually grind out. I've hit something. Yeah, you know what's actually kind of funny about this is I've done probably about six runs of this game now since I've learned it. And that is the first time out of like all those runs that I've actually I've actually died. So <laughs> it's why I couldn't tell you like what the what the loss was when you die in this game. Alright, let's come back up a little bit. Alright, more shells. It's probably the last shark. Yep. Let's see if we get anything here. I only have five shells, so... Power level raised. Okay. I mean, technically, we go. Oh, there's the submarine. There it is. Let's go ahead and go after Jaws. Let's see what happens. Now, when you start, you always, like, just shoot some bombs out from your boat, and the bombs actually do pretty good damage. And then when you take a hit by Jaws, you lose the boat. But there are invincibility frames after that happens, which is nice. I kind of don't like fighting Jaws in this, uh... shallow water area, because I don't have a lot of room to move and dodge stuff. And you can see that the enemy count seems to be a little bit greater right now. But you can see, like, I'm draining his power slowly. If you're not the kind of person that's good with the uh, NES button mashing, use like an NES Advantage stick or some other kind of uh, turbo controller. Now, unfortunately, Jaws does get his health back uh, in between battles, so... But this is definitely a better area to fight him, because I have a lot more room to move around. So I'm much less likely to run into a random enemy. Get those shells, probably gonna need them. Another one, and another one. Very nice. Oh, and that is killing my wrist right now. <laughs> Mind mashing that fast. Another shell. All right, it's getting close. Oh, I was killing my arm like crazy. Yeah, so every uh, couple of side view stages, we actually go to these bonus levels. So once every couple of encounters, you'll be able to get these. And this is a great way to, to get some shells. So if you're trying to upgrade, uh, these are not bad things. They can get a little tedious, uh, get a little time consuming if you're trying to rush through the game. Because sometimes like you don't really need the shells. Especially late into the game, when you've played for a while, it's like, oh god, here's another bonus stage, I don't really need this, but... It's whatever. It, it's a nice little way to, like, mix things up. But we'll see how many shells I get from this. Okay, let's see. Six shells, very nice. I'm up to 11 right now. And really, I should probably be trying to go for Jaws, because his health bar is still pretty low, but I do want to show off the submarine. Because it is actually a really important, uh, gameplay mechanic. Oh, Jaws found me! So we might not even show off the submarine. But basically, if you decide to try this game for yourself, if you've never really played it before, or, or you're trying to learn the game, definitely, the submarine helps a lot, especially on, like, a first playthrough, when you're still trying to get used to things. It does make life a lot easier, and the secondary shot is actually pretty useful, because it goes down, it has an arch to it. Or an arc. Which is quite nice, actually. Unfortunately, scuba form, uh, does not have that, you only have this basic shot. 
Gotta guess it's some kind of harpoon. The manual doesn't actually clarify, as far as I remember. Alright, Jaws is almost there. Alright. Final scene. So what we want to do is use the strobe when Jaws is perfectly centered with us and when he's on that bottom line. And then boom. We just beat the game. Yeah, so on that bottom line, he's close enough to the boat, and if you don't get the distance just right, you miss him completely when you try to poke him with the, like, the front rod on your boat. But yeah, that's the whole game. <laughs> I'm at, like, minute number 16 of my recording right now, and we've already finished the game. Uh, and the first few minutes was just talking, so... Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't- wasn't able to get the submarine. I was going for it, but then Jaws... Uh, I, I got to a random encounter, and then Jaws just appeared in it, and I was like, well, I might as well finish him off. Um, but yeah, the submarine helps out a lot, and then if you want to make life even easier, you can try to keep bouncing back and forth between the, uh, the ports. Uh, you know, after you've gotten the receiver or transmitter, uh, as long as you have enough shells, you'll always upgrade. And I think the highest I've gotten is at least level 8, and you deplete Jaws' health bar. Like, like... Let me go back a step. If you're, like, really terrible at button mashing, uh, this, this game definitely requires you to button mash, uh, powering up to a really high level will mean you'll have to do a whole lot less hits on Jaws in order to take him out, so... Uh, so just kind of going back and forth between the ports and getting those upgrades, uh, helps a lot. It's not necessary. Like, you could technically beat the game on level 3. You might even be able to beat it on power level 2 if you're, like, really, um just really going after Jaws, like, say you get out of a Jaws encounter, then you just, like, chase him down and try to get right back into another one, because he gets life back every time, um, you know, you're out of a battle with him, so, but, uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty fun game, I actually am really glad that, uh, Beesworth had talked me into playing it, thank you, Beesworth, for that, uh, it's very cool to be able to show it off on my channel and do a full playthrough of it, and sort of talk my way through it. So if you guys have never played it, or you have played it, but you're always confused by it, hopefully this video kind of helps uh, get you to understand the game a little bit better. Uh, it's not like the greatest thing ever made, but it's a good little quick pick up and play kind of game. It's the kind of game I could definitely see myself coming back to because it is so short. Like Trojan is the same kind of game for me where like I know I can beat it in 10 or 15 minutes and it's just fun to like pick up and play randomly, like especially in some kind of variety stream where I'm playing a lot of different NES games. It's a good way to get some more like content shoved in there between other like maybe bigger titles. So, but yeah, it's fun. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to have to actually see if I have this in my personal collection. I'm playing it off my flash cart right now, but uh, if it's not in my personal collection, I definitely need to add it. So, um, but yeah, guys, that's going to do it for me. That is Jaws for the NES. Uh, if you guys have played this before, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you haven't, let me know what you thought about what you saw here. Uh, if it is the kind of game that you might actually enjoy. Um, if you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. I've got many, many playthroughs like this and many more to come. Uh, if everybody already saw Sub. Thanks as always for your continued support. I really appreciate it, especially in these trying times. You guys will find out more about probably in the in, in the coming weeks or whatever. But uh, I really appreciate your support and sticking it out with me. So, um, but yeah, guys, that's it for me. Thanks again for watching, and until the next one, take it easy.